Next up, we have a, a somewhat late riser here this draft season uh, in, in Tommy Toad guy, the defensive tackle out of Ohio State, who, you know, as you kind of hop right into his, his background and statistics, uh, the first thing you're going to see is not a ton to really sink your teeth into um, by way of statistical production, right? Um, didn't really do much those first two seasons, was more of a rotational piece. And then, you know, this year in 2020, kind of stepped into that full-time role as they're starting one technique. And that's really the extent of um, our film on him. And I do think, though, even though with that being said, I think that the intangibles with Togi are certainly there, right? Um, you know, I'm not sure how many people paid attention to his pro day. That's really how he hopped on the radar for a lot of people. But he had 40 reps on uh, the 225 test, which that's just that's just madness. I've only ever had one teammate that even got close to that. And, you know, that guy's a physical freak. And Togi is even more of a physical freak because, you know, he turned around and ran a 49740 yard dash. So, you know, you see a guy who has the physical intangibles, most certainly. Um, the only question is, how do those manifest on film? Obviously, like I said, a limited sample um, of those skills manifesting. But I think that from from what I saw in the four games that I watched, obviously not not a ton, but I think that I have a pretty good picture of how those skills did translate and will continue to translate. So first things first, um, to me, his best attribute, unsurprisingly, is his ability to anchor and, and be strong at the point of attack. Um, you might hear the, the 40 reps and say, how is this not a 20 out of 20? Um, I think that a lot of that comes down to his size, actually. I think that, you know, you look at a guy like, say, Tyler Shelvin or Aline McNeil, the other two uh, nose slash one techniques that we've done to this point. And, you know, they have 40 to 50 pounds on Togia. And I think that that certainly makes a difference in terms of, sure, he might have more raw strength than them, but when it comes to him getting driven off the ball, I think that it's certainly easier for opposing offensive linemen just because he, he has a lot less mass behind him, right? So that's why I think that that grade on film was about a 17. Obviously, you could say, you know, hey, maybe we're going to draft him, almost sort of redshirt him in a sense and just bulk him up and make him that guy, that 320-pound guy, and that's certainly possible. But as of right now, I'd say right around a 17 there. Unlike those guys, though, uh, in Aleem and Shelvin, I did think that he offered more – as a pass rusher and particularly as a one gap penetrator than either of those guys did. I think that he had a pretty explosive first step uh, from time to time, at least I'll say it wasn't always the most consistent thing, but it was solid nonetheless for a guy at his size, uh, 302 pounds, I believe. And then, you know, in terms of his pass rush ability, he's certainly not the most refined guy. He doesn't have some crazy intricate uh, pass rush tool belt, but I, I think that he had active hands. He wasn't really quitting on plays. And I think that that manifested in a lot more plays being made than I maybe would have thought, especially when you look at those 20, 2018, 19 numbers, you know, I think that he did a pretty solid job on film in 2020. Otherwise, I don't think there's a ton to talk about with the other, with the other grades. The leverage was a bit of a concern from time to time for me, which was a little bit disappointing because out of a guy as a one technique, uh, leverage is kind of key, especially when you're potentially getting double team. I feel like that sort of contributed negatively to that uh, anchor grade as well, but but no, overall, I think a 72, which for a guy who sort of came out of nowhere for me, that's that's certainly a, a positive grade, no question. And then when you put that on the overall big board and see where he compares, um, that that nets him as, what is that, my sixth defensive tack on the board? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, my sixth defensive tack on the board uh, of the 10 that I'm, I'm doing, and at least here. Um, obviously, Mike couldn't join me for this video, so it would have been interesting to see where he put him. Uh, overall, I know he was a little bit higher on like Levi, for example, than I was, but, but regardless, I think that he's a solid pick. If your team's looking for um, a, a one technique in a four, three, or potentially a four technique in a three, four, I don't think that right away he projects as a nose tackle um, just at his size. I think that, like I said, you would have to add 20, 25 pounds on him. And, you know, if you're just going to essentially red shirt him in the NFL, that's fine. But I wouldn't mind sticking him as a four technique and seeing what he's able to do out there uh, against opposing tackles. Because I think that, you know, even though he'll, he'll certainly be at like a height disadvantage, I think that could potentially help solve some of those leverage concerns going up against taller, taller guys on the outside compared to say the smaller or shorter, more stout centers and guards, you know, put him against a tackle and just ask him to punch his hands in his chest every play and play off him. I think that Togi uh, could certainly have some good value there for teams and he also could be a one get penetrator as a one technique in a four three the only question again would be um you know 
just how often are you going to play him on passing downs? I think that he was solid, but I don't think he's like, oh, I want him in every third and long or anything like that. So it's, it's an interesting question. I would probably, um, I probably prefer him in a three, four, I think personally, just based off the way he plays and sort of his athletic profile. But I think either way, he's a versatile enough prospect to where um, there's not, there shouldn't be many teams just flat writing him off of their boards this coming draft season. So with that being said, um, that's really all I have for you guys today. A little bit of a shorter video, but you know he's the 10th defensive tackle that we've done at this point. So I think you guys get the picture by now. So uh, with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Make sure you drop a comment in the comment section down below. What do you what do you think of Tommy Toe guy? If you've watched film, if you're coming back a month from now and your team just drafted him, you know, let me know what your thoughts are of him of him now. You know, was he a second round pick, third round pick, fourth round pick? Where did he go? And what are your thoughts on the value that your team got? Uh, having heard my opinion and hopefully crafted some of your own. So with that being said, click that subscribe button. Hopefully you guys join me in the next video and I'm, I'm mic'd up and now I'm micing out. Peace guys.